Four days, three nights. This is the Hajiang Lu. Never before have we spent four days on the back of a motorbike, carving through miles and miles of winding roads, wanting nothing more than to stop at every turn. With each passing limestone mountain, Ricefield Terrace, Deep Valley, and Emerald Waters, we try not to take our eyes off the dramatic scenery of Hajiang. Rain, dust, or shine, we met the rush of wind with smiles on our faces as we rode through the unrivaled panoramas of the UNESCO Dong Van Geopark, Mapilung Pass, and so much more. In this journey through the breathtaking landscapes of northernmost Vietnam, we made lifelong friendships with our formidable guide, easy riders, and fellow explorers. After hours of scaling the rugged mountains, our tightly knit group gathered over family homemade feasts of Vietnamese specialties and bonded over karaoke nights and happy water in our remote Hmong homestays. Every moment of our ride through the Hajiang Loop will be forever etched in our memory. Let's begin our journey in the town of Hajiang, getting ourselves ready for our four day adventure. Good morning from Hajiang. We're just about to take off on our four day, three night tour of this entire loop that we booked directly through the Hajiang hostel that we stayed at. In about 20 minutes or so, we're gonna meet the rest of our crew along with our guides. And we're just so excited to head off on this adventure. It's really gonna push us out of our comfort zone, but honestly, that's gonna be the best. We made it to our very first stop, the Baksum Pass, and it, we are so high up in the mountains right now, but it's incredibly hazy, so we can't really see too many of the mountains over there, but I think it's still a marvelous view no matter what. We're really not sure what's causing the haze, because normally this is supposed to be a really beautiful pass, but right now it's absolutely so hazy, we cannot see a thing. Hopefully as we continue on the loop, things will clear up, and hopefully we we'll catch some beautiful views. About 10 minutes after we stopped at Baxum Pass, we came to this little marketplace, convenience store, you can buy any necessities or snacks that you want. And there's actually a viewing platform just outside that goes all the way around so you can see further into the valley from here. We made it to this beautiful viewpoint in Quan Ba and you can see the Dam Sun town right behind me with all of these fairy bosoms is what they call it or mountainous hills. It's actually so marvelous and peaceful and I love that there's almost nobody here except for our group. You're still like amazed. Yeah, I don't think they've seen a drone before. <laughs> <laughs> Right now we are overlooking this gorgeous valley. You see a little bit of the town below along with these winding roads. But it's hilarious because the pit spot that we are at right now is serving cold beer and very interesting choices of music.
I don't think much can beat Vietnamese coffee. Still so dark and rich, but creamy and sweet. So good. After a very bumpy ride on these off-roads on bikes that are not meant for it, we finally are heading over to Sujiao Waterfall. And this is definitely one of the major highlights on the entire Hajiang Loop. It's looking really busy right now though, oh, yeah. but hopefully we can still take a dip in that water. Isn't it? Talking so many people. I don't... <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect this many people though. It's cool though. It's nice. It's very really lively. So lively. <laughs> I'm gonna put me on the spot like that, huh? Yeah. What is this? This is happy water. It's not just water, hey? Can I smell this? It smells like. Oh, this doesn't smell that bad. It smells really? quite sweet. Mm. It's quite sweet. Yeah, it smells sweet. I don't, I don't think it'll taste sweet. No. <laughs> but, but it does smell sweet. Mod! Good morning from the beautiful countryside of Suzia. We had such a blast yesterday having our very first family dinner, eating some great food, having some happy water, and singing some karaoke. In about an hour or so, we're gonna pack up, head back on the road, but this time to the most northern part of Hajiang, Don Van. So let's go and hit the road. We've been driving east on DT 181 and that scenic road was one of the best that we've seen. I wanted to stop so bad, but we just kept going. This is our very first viewpoint. I think we're near Namla View. You can see a little bit of the valley on this side and I know it's quite hazy still. We're gonna keep going and hopefully we'll get a little bit more of a clearer view of the mountains. We're gonna continue on north towards Mayovac. Hopefully the sky clears up a little bit so we can see a little bit more of the mountains, but just being here in the scenic space and the tranquility with just us and our group is absolutely marvelous. So we have to throw on these like rain ponchos, not because it's gonna rain, but literally because it's gonna be so much mud splattering on us, we have to protect our clothes. But this doesn't even like, fit me fully <laughs> and our shoes yeah. they're gonna be done for <laughs> oh.
are pretty good in here. I'm just really hot. Why? So I think there was a bit of a misinterpretation. So it's dust, not yeah, mud. It is. But it's a good thing. Thankfully for the masks, that helped a lot, hey? Yeah, it's all that excavation that they're doing on the road. And all of this was just to protect our faces and our clothes. So we're really grateful for our tour guides for doing that. After that crazy two hour ride through the mountains with the crazy gravel and big rocks along the path, we finally made it to the town of Mayovac. We're gonna grab a little lunch. Right here is the restaurant. I'm not gonna try to pronounce it, but you guys can see right over here. Super excited, everyone is starving. It's already 1 p.m. I think it's been, what, five or so hours since we've last ate, so let's go grab some food. After lunch, we were nearing the Mapilung Pass, which is probably the most iconic spot in all of the Hajiang Loop. And as we were getting close, we actually took a detour down the side road, 193A, and we were like, what are we doing over here? But it turns out that they actually took us down to do this riverboat cruise. We're actually on the Song Nyokwe or the Nyokwe River. And we can actually see the Mapulan Pass all the way from here on this blue water. This is the moment we've been waiting for. We are finally at Mapilung Pass, you guys. This is one of the most beautiful drives in all of Vietnam. And we get to see where we were not that long ago, just on that blue, gorgeous river, the Song Nho Quê. We just said goodbye to half our tour group this morning. We're gonna miss them so much. They were such a blast to hang out with. They actually opted for a three-day, two-night tour for the Hajiang Loop, whereas we opted to do a four-day, three-night tour to see more of the loop. And right now, we're gonna be heading on to the most northern part of Vietnam, overlooking China. This close to the Chinese border. See that fence over there? That's where it is. So if you wanted to walk over there, maybe don't hop the fence. You can see the red flag waving right over here. Is that where it is? Yeah. We 
committed to the Lung Gu Flag Point, which is one of the most northern points that you can make it to here in Vietnam. And if you peer out all throughout the 360 degrees of the flag point, you can see not just the mountains of Vietnam, but actually out into the hazy mountains of China. And one thing you can do is that you can climb to the very top of the flagpole. Now the stairs are a little bit narrow, so be careful. We do have a higher vantage point into the valleys below. But our recommendation is you have a lot more room at the base of the flagpole, tons of room to walk around, and honestly, the view is just as great. One thing to mention though, is it is so busy here. So if you wanted a picture by the flagpole, definitely come as early as possible. We are at Tamma Pass, which is this beautiful mountain pass with the curved roads that we see right underneath me. And it's actually a very popular spot for people to take photos of the traditional Hmong ethnic groups that are dressed up in their attire. And they've got a lot of kids here carrying plants in their baskets. It's actually really adorable. <laughs> It's almost the end of our day three of the Hazyang Loop. And on our way to Quan Pa, the village that we're gonna be staying in tonight, we actually took a shortcut from the main highway of the Loop QL4C on this completely unnamed road that is actually really well paved. And our guides took us to this amazing coffee shop with a beautiful view, there's Jason waving, with a beautiful view of the mountains and the valley here that I think is called Gan Di. <laughs> we begin our final fourth day here on the Hajiang Loop in the town of Kuamba. It's a little bit rainy, so it's definitely a little bit cold sitting in the back of the motorbike. So right now we're going to go grab a little breakfast. I think we're grabbing some pho, which is the quintessential Vietnamese breakfast, and it's going to warm us right up. We are going seriously local today. As you can see from the tables to the ground, it's definitely an experience to get used to. Um, I was kind of born in this kind of environment, but for the rest of the group, I think it's going to be a little bit tricky. But the food looks amazing. Really excited to eat some chicken fuck. After a little rainy ride, being sprayed by a little bit of mud and coming down below the mist, we made it to Tam Luang Cave. And it's actually a 30 minute hike up these steps. I'm already kind of out of breath, but the views are starting to look pretty nice. So 
so out of breath. The hike up is significantly steeper than we thought, but we made it. And it's actually only about, I'll say 15 or so minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. It's not horrible on the time, but it is strenuous. But now we made it to the mouth of the cave. What an amazing time we had going through the entire Hajiang loop, not just seeing the beautiful sights, albeit sometimes a little bit hazy, but it was still absolutely gorgeous. But honestly, our favorite part is just meeting so many incredible people, partying it up with them, not just the people in our group, but even our tour guides. It was just such an amazing time. And the experience was actually so great for us to be able to push out of our comfort zone, being able to ride the scooter through all these amazing places throughout the mountains, and actually staying at some amazing traditional homestays in the middle of nowhere. Tomorrow, we're gonna head off on a completely different experience, so join us next time as we head on a three-day, two-night luxury cruise through Baitu Long Bay. <laughs>